So for those of you who don't know me guys, my name is King Yaya and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am married to uh, Sir Wicknell Chibayo for now. Um, and he is what you would consider a public figure. Whether you think he's a public figure for good things or bad things, it doesn't matter. We're not in the public domain. So now people, a good question was, how do I like being married to a public figure? Um, do I like being married to a public figure? What I will say is, I will quote a very important lady who was Michelle Obama. Um, she was in an interview, and she was like, how is it you know, being married to the first black president of America? And listen, I'm not by any means trying to put myself in that category. I just really liked her response, which was, Obama can be president of the United States, but when there are ants in our house, I will call him and say, my guy, there are ants in the house. <laughs> and that's really how it is. My husband is a public figure to you guys. He's not a public figure to me. To me, Wiknero is Bajon. He's husband. He is the man that I make demands to, to be like, my guy, this is what's going on. This is what I need. And this is the, what is happening in our household is way more important than what's going on there. So how is it being married to a public figure? Um... The relationship side to it is um, it's just the same as being married to any man. Um, from a social point of view, um, everyone kind of cares about your marriage and what's going on. Um, from an ego point of view, yes, of course, he really feels like I'm, in, I'm that guy, you know, and you're lucky. But it's like we get on, like it's, it's every day. The same issues you deal with in your marriage, you know, the same issues I deal with. It's just the unfortunate thing is a lot of our stuff goes viral. A lot of people care. Um, a lot of people try to destroy. And a lot of people feel entitled to our marriage. Lastly, I would also add that a lot of people who come in and around us, especially in the marriage setting, are people who we really have to question because a lot of people come to destroy as well we get attacked and destroyed by people who are right under our noses like people who you would have helped people who you would have led into your house people who you would have let in and amongst your kids and they're usually the people who really want to destroy you i don't know what that's about but yep that's what it's like being married to a public figure someone asked how i deal when my husband is trending you know i actually don't follow my husband nor do i really follow like the the posha what is or whatever groups out there I really, I really don't. And a lot of the time I know what my husband is doing because he'll tell me like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with right now. And this is what I'm working towards. And I'll be like, oh, okay. The other things he won't tell me, then I'll hear about it. And obviously I'll come on and be like, where the hell is this? And then he'll be like, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Um, but when my husband's trending, he's trending. When we're trending, we're trending. I mean, there's nothing you can really do. Um, I get a lot of people who actually DM me on Instagram being like, oh, how do you deal with the like the social media side and the backlash and the people attacking you uh, point of view when it comes to, you know, being married to a public figure and dealing when, with your person when they're trending is, I always say stay true to yourself, stay true to the people who, who matter. Like there's some people who I care what they think about, you know, my parents, my, my real friends. Then there are other people who it's like, if you think I'm an alien... Okay, you think I'm an alien, and then what? Um, someone asked, um, how easy is it to stay yourself when you're married to like someone who's larger than life? Which I think is also a very, very good question. Um, you know, what I would say is this. It's got nothing to do with when you're married to a public figure or not. And in no ways or shape or form do I say my marriage is great or exemplary or anything that should be duplicated or replicated. No. Um, I really, I really had to ask myself, am I going to lose myself or am I going to be myself? I think a lot of women, we lose ourselves in marriage in hopes to be something that maybe our husband will admire more or love more or the people around him will accept more or, you know, we make ourselves acceptable, which in some setups is the correct thing to do. Like, you know, some people will assume, right? So a lot, some people will join the churches, will join the wagons that need to be joined um and i've been lucky i think in a lot of ways my husband's not someone who's ever imposed anything on me i think that is the most important thing uh one and two i think you know we don't have the same friends he's 12 years older than me so i do my own thing and i go my own places he definitely doesn't like eating out or hanging out where i hang out and eat out 
nor do his friends. He's got his own life. So if you want to maintain yourself and your own image and your own whatnot in your life, then do that. Um, as long as it's okay with the person you're married to. If it's okay with the person that you're married to that you have your own life and you do your own thing, then do that. You know, um, I would say I'm really lucky. Like, I mean, yes, I'll post things that my husband will be like, what the hell is this? Or, or not. And sometimes he just doesn't even care what I'm up to, you know? And I think that's okay. You know, why must someone, why must we always feel the need to own someone's whole storyline or whatever no there was this chick who i met like in the salon and she was like oh my husband doesn't allow me to get lashes and like my hair and all this and i was like what are men in zimbabwe doing okay why are you now concerning yourselves in salon matters like we all know you like slate weeds okay so why are you now trying to make your wives look like you know unkept women in these homes if you're married to a guy like that, shame. It just means he's very insecure. And, you know, he's just insecure. As far as having kids back to back, at the time I did it because I was young. And I think there was pressure for me to do that. Um, and I thought it was, I just really didn't think about it, to be honest. I just, I actually just didn't even get on any like contraception. And then I had my two kids back to back. You know, everyone's always like, yeah, da, da, da. you know, like it's easy. It's hard. <laughs> it's very hard. Don't do it unless your man has money and you can afford help. Because if you can't do those two things, you rip your own hair out one by one. You <laughs> rip your strands out. Um, I think I just had my kids at a time when I think I needed the distraction. Because that's when my husband was going through like all of his court cases and things like that. So it kind of just centered me a little bit. I had something else to focus on. And also when he came home, he had another life to live with those kids. Um, so I had my kids back to back. And to be honest, like I, sometimes I really regret it when they're on me because they can really tag team. They can really tag team me, you know. But it also meant I could get fat once, then lose the weight. Well, <laughs> attempt to lose the weight. Kawan as well. Do I want to have more kids? No, not for now. I think um, what I want to say about marriage in general, especially like to the young generation of girls, because I'm about you guys. I really, I be watching you guys sometimes, you know, I'm sure you see me here and there. Um, I think we have to be really careful in Zim right now, you know, I think it's become a trend to, because I want to ask a really good question. They were like, do you have any advice for us people under 30 who want to get married? And it was actually a guy, funny enough. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and I would say this. Don't go for the lights. I think it's easy. It's easier said than done to go for the lights. Everyone wants to go for this Mbinga or this rich dude or this notable dude. And everyone thinks that it's an easy life. There's a reason why rich men's wives aren't public and aren't easily accessible the reasons for this. It's not an easy life when you're married to someone with money. Um, you probably have a lot more sharks swimming around you than the regular person. Um, and as I said, it's always someone really close. Um, what I would say for young people in their 20s, um, don't rush it. I don't think the pressure to get married really young still really exists. I, would, I, I wouldn't have gotten as married as young as I did, but that's because I'm married now. So I look back and I say, oh... I could have done this and I should have done this and we could have done that. No, um, but I think it is important to work, experience life a little bit, have stories, have your heart broken a couple of times, be lied to, know what men are about. I do think that's very important. And I also wanted to say to young girls that the acceptance rate that you guys have of, um, you know, just wanting to be with a man of money is, is, is getting scary. You know, we have a lot of young girls in Zim right now who are okay with being someone's third or fourth wife, which there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know what I mean? But we want that for the wrong reasons. You know, we want that because it's easier. We want that because there's money. And it, and it's true. It is easier to be someone's fourth wife because you don't have to deal with his relatives. You don't have to deal with the pressures or the stresses of someone who's coming back from work upset, right? You get the, the you know, the side of him. You get the weekend side to him, the side on... Saturday that needs to woo up the side of him that wants to go out to drink on Saturday, but that's not really the real version of someone and it 
it does get lonely um, towards the end. But don't get me wrong, there's some chicks who are doing it very well and living a really good life. Um, but I just think that we're just becoming okay with that too early. Like, I mean, if you're in your 20s and you're already thinking, yeah, I could be someone's fourth or fifth wife. It's like, girl, at least wait till you get that right. I got a point and said, please talk about women issues in marriage. Um, I got married to a man who's 12 years older than me, um, but I just want to spit facts here. Just because someone's older than you doesn't mean that they're more mature than you. Just because someone's been married before or is married doesn't mean that they're going to be a better husband to you. Um, just because someone has money doesn't necessarily mean the marriage is easier. I mean, these men are doing the most. So, and my mom always says this, okay, where there is honey, there are bees. So you also need to be, you know, equipped for that. You know, which a lot of young girls, you just see the trips and the holidays and those things end, hey? And those things have seasons because business is seasonal, you know? It takes a lot to be married to someone when they're going through a lot. So I would say that, and especially if you are into married men, because let's be honest, ladies, that's just become a reality that's out there. Some people are dating married men and you're very happy and you're keeping your married man very happy. And those are just things that are out there and we must just talk about these things openly and casually. And I, I really appreciate the person who did say that. We, we do need women talking about those type of things and women's point on it. Um, it's a reality. If it's fulfilling for you, for now, that's okay, good. And let's hope that you're getting what you need out of it. But the chances are that that's long lasting. And I'm talking about the sense of being fulfilling or having like you have someone in your life. Like you're, you're building your life with someone. That's the bit that I would question in the long term, but in the short and the medium, listen, yeah, there's some men who really do give you the lights and there's some, you know, married men who really do make you feel like, you know, the world that you live in um, is really great. But what I would say is a lot of the time when you meet married men who approach you in a bar or whatever, when you find out about how the wife is living, you, you never want to live her life. Funny enough, or you never really want to walk in her shoes. So that says a lot because that's that's him 80% of the time. You got 20% of the time. But when the next person comes, your 20 looks a lot more like the 80 over there, you know? So I would say we just have to be careful in Zimbabwe. Right now, yes, everyone wants a being and everyone wants a man. Anurid. But it's just because things are tough. But when things get normal, you just also have to be cognizant of that. You know, it comes with a lot. There have been young girls in my DMs. I remember I get a lot of like strawberry letters, guys. A lot of people DM me and tell me their setups and be like, what should I do here? Um, there was a lady who was dating an older man, powerful or whatever. And she was like, yo, I just don't know if I really trust this man's health. And we have young girls now who that's even a conversation that they're having and they're there and these conversations are having are being had sorry about pep prep or the above um and i'm not really someone who's judgmental and i would just say this like if you feel in your life that you're at that which is i'm saying i don't in your 20s you are a gem you are a gem. Don't let any man or any fool that's lied to you and take you for, make you feel like, oh, you're done and there's nothing else and there's no one else. Um, don't lie to you. Start making those kind of decisions, I would say, in your 30s. Because there are young girls out here who are taking these meds to accommodate this married man who... I mean, don't get me wrong. From what I hear, some chicks are really being given, like, bucks out there. Which, I mean, if... For you, that's what you want right now, and you're getting that right now, power to you. But I would say life goes far. You know what I mean? Why get caught up in something in your 20s or early 30s and have to live with that for the rest of your life? That's what I would say, because someone actually wrote me a letter being like, oh, do you think I should go for this guy? And I was like, whoa. 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 <laughs> Some of you would say... But at least you're thinking the correct way. Do try protect yourself. Do try protect yourself. Okay? And it's true. Some women are getting HIV from being loyal and married to a man. Some women are dating a man who they know his health isn't exactly 100% from the jump. But maybe the person who we can actually say is in a smarter position is the person who knows exactly what they're being faced with and are taking the necessary measurements. So there's no judgment out there. People are doing these things. So we do need to be um, to the point. Someone asked me about the balancing act, how you balance things. 
I don't think I do. Hey, I actually think there are a lot of things I could be doing better. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just someone who I'm just a happy person, but I, I want more for my life too. Believe it or not, I do. <laughs> Um, I think there are times in your life, like as I said, that for the for the past couple of years, I really had to dedicate to my son and also having two kids back to back. It's only now when I can kind of be like, you know, and that's why you saw I started my farming projects and things like that. I just needed other things to try. Doing business in Zim is really hard and I've learned that firsthand. So um, I would say I don't balance things all the time. I don't want people to think that I am. And also, I would also like to say this business of thinking that everyone on social media has their things in check and that, you know, this person is living a better life than me because they posted this and that. Don't do that to yourself. I mean, I took a break from social media and it was for a lot of reasons. But something I noticed when I was on social media was people would have to come to me and be like, oh, did you see this or did you hear this? And I'd be like, oh, really? Oh, my God. Oh, really? And it's quite nice to actually not know what everyone else is doing. It's actually quite nice. Because when you're on your social media, you're posting what you're doing and you're also seeing what other people are doing, right? And I think subconsciously you do start to think, but why not this? And why not that? And I do that a lot. It's a shame. I do that a lot. I'm like, but why didn't you do this for me? And I've been here for five years and I've done this and been by you. And look at this person. And they just came around the corner. And you'll always be like, yeah, but... Did you know this? Did you know that? And I guess he'll be right or whatever, but we're not talking about how right he is sometimes, okay? Um, I really do want to encourage young girls to know that you, yes, you know, you just kind of have to do what you can live with in life. And that's the most important thing. Everything you do, do, you have to live with. The repercussions, the pros and the cons. Um, but yeah, there's some girls getting flued out. That's a good question about mom pressures. I think my mom pressures are, I just want my kids to rate me, you know what I mean? Like I think, I really do believe in what Maya Angelou says, that you only really know who you were when you die. So, and my sister was actually saying this the other day, she was actually like, you know, the only person who will tell you if you were a good mom or not are really are your kids. And this will probably be when they're older and they've maybe seen the world more. Um, I would say my pressures are really just getting my kids right now into like, good schools and just making sure that they do the best that they can in school and in high school. Um, but I think having an autistic son really helped me because it just made me know that the world isn't as straight jacket as you want it. So your kids can really be as beautiful or as big or as creative as you want. So I don't, I'm not the, the, that type of parent that has like any kind of like expectations of my kids. I think some things would be nice and we'll be working towards certain things. But if they don't work out like that, I don't think I'm going to take it hard. I'm going to be like, oh, is that what you decided? Shop, shop. <laughs> you know? About fitness. I actually started fitness um, because um, it was my me time. So it was my time an hour away from my kids with my trainer and a time to really connect with my mind, body, and soul. And then, you know, my body started responding to that. And I would say as far, as far as fitness goes, I'm not opposed to, like, getting your body surgically enhanced. Um, I think it's if you put the money for it or you can find someone to sponsor it, by all means, let them pay for it. Um, but I would say for moms, don't put yourself under pressure. Your body changes permanently after you've had a baby. So don't put yourself under too much pressure, but I would say it's important to be healthy. I do think exercise, I do think try to be the best version of yourself because that's the only version you can really be. Um, if you can't afford a trainer, get on YouTube. If you can't afford to watch YouTube videos for an hour, go for a walk. If you can't walk, eat well. If you can't exercise, just eat well. Cut back on alcohol because alcohol is the devil. It might not even be food. Alcohol. So... Um, what are my fitness goals? My fitness goals would really to just be a bad bitch. <laughs> to confuse somebody, son. That's, that's really what I'm out here trying to do at all times. <laughs> so just confuse somebody's, um, embryo. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. 